Today, I want to show you one of the fastest ways to increase your SEO traffic using the ChatGPT SEO strategy that 90% of website owners just don't know about. And I'll walk you through it step by step so that you can follow along. We'll give it to your team and it's incredibly easy to do with AI. Plus, I'll reveal the whole system and SOP and process for doing this for free. And it's exactly how I've stopped this website plateauing in the past. Plus, it's how I'm going to improve the site's rankings for this in the future. So if we look over the last week and a half for this website, it's kind of topped out at around 1,980, 1,950 visitors per day from SEO. So the traffic for this website has improved a lot, but the problem is it's kind of plateauing right now. We need to repair the rankings. And of course, with SEO, with any sort of SEO journey, it's going to be slower sometimes. Now, the bad news here is uh, obviously some rankings have dropped on the website because we've published new content, but the old content might have dropped before. There's work to be done. And also you have to constantly be on this. And I'll show you how to do that later in a system so that you can track it every week and make sure your rankings don't drop or plateau like this. But the good news is the content is already published. It's very natural in SEO to see a plateau like this. It's easy to fix. URLs are indexed. The content for this website is indexing really nicely. And let's be honest, if the rankings have dropped before, but they were ranking first page, then it's going to be much easier to rank that content first page again, because Google's already familiar with the URL. We know it's an easy keyword. We just have to improve the content. So how do we do this? Well, first thing I'm going to do is go on to Ahrefs and I want to check out the keywords previously for this website. Now we're still maintaining a lot of number one positions, which is absolutely awesome. But the problem is some of our content has dropped. So what we're going to do is compare our current rankings versus the month before, but then we're going to sort the pages by the websites where the traffic has dropped a lot. And as you can see here, we've got a bunch of pages that have dropped in rankings. Now this can be down to many reasons with SEO. Number one, it could be because of SERP volatility. So sometimes the algorithm updates and there's different levels of volatility, which means the traffic just goes up and down. You can actually get this free tool at wincher.com, which has a, a SERP volatility index. All this means is, is comparing how many search results have moved on average based on the top 30 positions on Google. And SERP volatility is very natural. So that's one reason. Another reason is because Google has a freshness score. So if you have a competitor who comes along and they publish a new piece of content, sometimes that can outrank your content that's old because it's fresher, it's newer. And Google wants to test whether it performs well. On top of that, it could be because the page has not been updated for a while, or it could just be that there's more competition for rankings. I mean, this is a very public case study website. I'm sure that plenty of people have created a bird's website based on the case studies that I've shown with ChatGPT in the past. But what we can do is analyze which pages have suffered the most in traffic. And then we want to run through the keywords and make sure that the keyword that's dropped and the traffic that's dropped is for a keyword that we're trying to rank for. So for example, what bird lays blue eggs relates to my page. And therefore this would be a good opportunity to improve my content because this page is relevant to the keyword I'm trying to rank for. And ideally you want to go for the pages with the biggest loss in traffic first, because they're the highest leverage opportunities. Obviously, if we went down here, if we focus on pages that only lost like 12 traffic, that's not as good an opportunity as the content that's lost, say 200 traffic, right? So in this video, I'm just going to focus on a handful of URLs, obviously, otherwise I'll be sat here all day. But the good news is with ChatGPT, we can easily fix these pages and I'll show you exactly how to in a minute. Now, what we want to do is fill out this tracker with all the keywords that we want to improve, right? And all the pages so that we can easily track the date of the changes, what changes we made and the rankings before and after. And this way, it's just nice, it's neat, it's easy to organize and we can come back to the rankings later and see what's improved. So if we take this keyword, we'll pop that in here. Then we'll add the date, which is the 4th of August today. When we actually change the content, we'll insert the changes here. And then we can put the rankings. So it is now position eight. Let's get this formatted nicely. There we go. It's all aligned. And then we can put the rankings after as well when we need to. We're going to delete the rest of the columns, clean it up a little bit, make it easier to focus. And there we go. And then we're going to find a bunch of other keywords and the URLs we can change too. And the good thing about Ahrefs is you can easily do that. Now there's a lot of good tools for this. You don't have to buy Ahrefs. You could use SERPstat, you could use SEMrush, SE Ranking is another option. 
There's loads of good software like Ahrefs, which is a lot cheaper. I just use it because this is what I use for all my agency clients and we already have access to it. And then we'll just fill out the rest of the list. Like I say, in this video, I'm only going to focus on five pages for the sake of speed, but this is step one. And then I might do some more later in my own time. Now, one thing I want you to note here is before you make any changes to your content, you might want to keep a backup. And that's because if you create a backup of the content that's already ranking, and let's say you made some changes and actually this sometimes happens, your content just drops in rankings after you've created and improved it. Well, if you have a backup version, you can easily copy and paste it back into the article and restore it. I'm not going to do that because I'm just jumping straight into it. And this is just a test website that I don't really care so much about. But that's something important to note for you to do, just in case you do need to restore your rankings from before. And now it's time to move on to re-optimization. Now for this, I'm actually going to use Phrase.io. Phrase.io is a really powerful tool for improving your rankings and re-optimizing your content. I'll show you how in a second. I got a really good deal on Phrase because it was on AppSumo a while back. But if you want a cheap tool for doing this, they basically all work. You know, you can use Surfer, you can use Phrase, Surge Graph has been pretty good. You can use whatever you want. But just to save you a bit of money, if you're paying for a tool like, like Phrase, it might be quite expensive. Whereas if you actually type in something like re-optimize content on AppSumo, you'll see a bunch of similar tools that basically do the same thing. So if you look at Neuron Writer as well, you can see that you actually get a content optimization score. This actually creates AI content for you. And it basically does the same thing that tools like Phrase do because it gives you a SEO score. It gives you the LSI keywords. It analyzes your competitors, etc. I'll show you exactly how to do that. But basically, if you want to save money, just get an AppSumo deal. It's cheap enough. All right, so next steps, we're going to go on to new document, and then I'm going to click on reoptimize existing content. And we've got the URLs already in this spreadsheet set up and ready to go. So we can just paste the URL in here. We can paste the target search query, and we will click create document. Now, what phrase actually does here is it extracts all the content from my URL, and then it plugs it into phrase like so. And you just edit your title right here. And then you can click confirm import and then we'll hit let's go like so. And what it's doing in the meantime is looking at competitors that I'm trying to outrank on the first page of Google and it's importing the data and the details of their website. And we can use this to figure out, okay, what do we need to improve in our content to make sure that it ranks? So it's processed the top 20 search results like so, and then we'll click optimize your content. And we've got quite a high topic score. In fact, our topic score is actually higher than most of our competitors, which is a good sign. But there's always things we can improve, right? So here's a good thing that's being reconfirmed by this content is that it's pretty much on the right track, right? It's got a high topic score. It's 20% higher than most of our competitors. We've included a lot of relevant LSI keywords, which basically signals to Google that our content is very relevant. The word count is pretty decent. We've got a decent amount of headers, decent amount of links, etc. So I don't think there's really any serious issues on the page. So this is useful to run through phrase because you can easily see, okay, my content's good to go, but there's something else on the page I need to improve. One of the first things that I would say we need to improve here is the introduction paragraph here. Why? Because if you look at the introduction paragraph, it's basically all fluff and it doesn't give value straight away. So you see how it says what birds lay blue eggs, and it just talks about the colors of blue eggs and that sort of thing, but it doesn't give any value in terms of people looking for a list, right? So what we can do is go to ChatGPT4 like this, and using ChatGPT, we can actually improve the introduction and make it much more interesting, which is going to improve our on-page metrics. And if we hook people in and make sure they keep reading, then we're more likely to improve our rankings because our on-page metrics are better. So here's a prompt I'm going to use, which is write me an introduction for the guide on, and then you would insert your title. And then you would say, use and insert your keyword in the first line. You always want your keyword in the first line, make signals to Google and signals to the readers that your content is very relevant to the search term that typed into Google. And then you say, answer the question in the introduction, plus give them a reason to keep reading. The reason you want to do this is because number one, you're creating value straight away. And then number two, you're making sure that you hook them in and make sure that they keep reading. 
And then on top of that, you want to set the tone straight away. So keep it interesting, fun, answer the question directly, give value straight away. And you don't want this to go on too long. If you let ChatGPT just do its own thing, it will write 100 words or 200 words for the intro and nobody's going to read that and it'll just bounce straight off the page. So you want to make it short, but you must answer the question. You don't want anything weird or cringe, which ChatGPT can often do. And you want to keep the language super simple. Complicated prompts for a 70 word introduction. But the good news is once it's set up, then you can just keep copying and pasting it every time. You don't need to think about it again. And I will include this prompt inside my free course. You can get it for free in the comments. Just type in your email address and you'll get instant access. So here you can see we've got a much better introduction. In fact, if we compare the introduction with ChatGPT versus the old introduction, you can see that the quality is just much better as well. It's better written, it's more interesting. Now I'm nitpicking a little bit, but it's simply because the rest of the content is good to go. It has a high topic score as we saw a phrase. So I'm just going to improve it slightly. And you can see before it doesn't really answer the question straight away because it doesn't mention any bird species that actually lay blue eggs. So we're going to pop that into the introduction like this. But as you can see, it's more fun, more interesting. It's got some puns. And that's going to be better written than 90% of your competitors, which is crazy because it's written by AI. It's not written by a human. And these little things can make the difference, especially if you've got a post that you just need to tweak a little bit. So we'll hit update like that. Now, here's the other thing I would say with this content, right? We want to improve click through rates, which means when people see our article listed on Google, they're more likely to click through to ours versus other people. Now, if you actually look at our article, the title only says what birds label blue eggs. It's literally the keyword from the article. Whereas if you look at everyone else, they've included the number of birds and some of them have included the month and the date that it was last updated. That signals to the reader that this content is newer, which is more exciting to people. And it's just a little psychological trick that you can use too. And if you look at the top ranking article, it's actually listed the number of birds included in the article. So we need to do the same. So if I go to Yoast, this is a free plugin which helps you edit the title previewed on Google. We can edit this and say, right, what birds lay blue eggs? And then we'll list the number of birds mentioned in the article, which is 20 species. And we'll also include the last updated date, which is 2023. And therefore, potentially, we could improve our click-through rate. We don't know until we've tested the data. No one knows. But this trick is known to work pretty well. Now, one thing you might be tempted to do as well is to actually add more LSI keywords within your content, right? So there's a bunch of keywords we've not included, like you can see listed here, and that would increase our topic score if we add them. So for example, if I just typed in colored bird egg and I typed that in twice like this, it would improve my topic score. But you have to apply common sense here because if you smash your whole article with LSI keywords and it doesn't really fit within the article, it doesn't feel natural to the person reading it, it's just a waste of time. So you have to kind of use a bit of common sense there and say, right, I've got a high topic score, but do I need to include all the LSI keywords to get a 90% topic score? Is it worth it? No, because that would compromise the quality of the content. I'm also just going to add a H3 heading right here. There we go. Which basically a different variation of the keyword again. Now, one thing phrase recommends as well is actually adding more images to the content. So if we look at the research section over here, you can see that we need to increase the number of images on our page. On top of that, if we go through some of our competitors and we see what their content is like, we'll take a look at some of the top ranking pages here. We can see that what they've actually done is listed the name of the bird and then a separate section that talks about the bird. Now, we want to play spot the difference with our competitors to figure out what they're doing that I'm not, right? And if you look at this page as well, they've done the same. So they've listed each bird and then a bit of information about the bird with a nice little table. Now, if you look at my content, it's not done that, which means that if the articles that ranking me have formatted their content differently, then I should do the same. And therefore, same with this page as well. So what does that mean we need to do? It means that we should have a separate section on each of these birds. So let's do that. So this is the problem we're going to use to improve the content so that each of the species has a separate header and a bit of information about it. So if you want access to this full prompt, I won't read it all out loud, but you can get it in my free course. And basically we're going to ask it to write about a keyword, which we've inserted right here. 
We've asked it only to use H2 and H3 headings because we don't need any more H1s on the page. Every sentence should be on a new line, so it's nice and easy to read, nicely formatted, etc. And I've given it some really specific data for the article right here. So I've said, use the headings below that I'm giving you. We've listed all the types of species of birds we want to include. Add a markdown table of demographics for each bird too with different data. Make sure it's in a table. Uh, we want about 100 words for each heading. I've put that because ChatGPT, if you don't give it those instructions, it's just going to write like one or two sentences and it won't be enough content for each bird. And then that's basically it. And now it's created this content right here. Now, sometimes it's going to be stuck. So we'll just say continue. And then it will continue writing the rest of the article. And in the meantime, we can add this to our existing article to make it better. And then we can paste it. Now, obviously, if you're doing this yourself, you probably want to proofread it, check the quality of the content, rewrite it, etc. But for me, we're just blasting through this because I'm recording a YouTube video. So we'll keep going. It's up to eight now. If you get stuck, just press continue on ChatGPT and we'll paste in content like so. Now, additionally, if you look at the number of images on the content before, we only had three. But now that we've got each species of bird, that allows us to add in images for each bird, which means we can add more images and therefore we can match our competitors in that way too. Now, I think because the instructions were very specific, you can see that it's actually only writing about three different headings at a time, which is okay. I can keep pressing continue, but basically you have to bear in mind that the more specific you are with your instructions and your prompts, the less content chat GPT can do at once. Now, additionally, if you're doing this yourself, you might want to improve the quality of the tables because right now those tables are okay, but they're not perfect. As you can see, the content is quite generic. So you could definitely improve those tables and add like the size or the color of the bird, etc. Right now it's just got the geographic range, the species and the egg color. So from here, what we need to do is actually add some images for each page and we can get copyright free images from unsplash.com. And I'm going to find something that's relevant to the content I'm trying to search. So if I type in blackbird and then I'm trying to rank for a keyword related to eggs. So if I type in blackbird eggs on Unsplash, I can get some copyright free images like this. I can add the alt text, which is blackbird eggs, insert that into the post. And then we shall just pop that one in down there. And we can do the same for the rest of the species of birds on this article. Now, the other thing we can do is check the FAQs like this. So these are all questions that we could rank for. As you can see for this keyword right here, we've got the people also ask section. And you can see there's a bunch of related questions to our keyword that we could potentially rank for. And if I check, for example, this question versus the content that I have, we haven't answered some of the people also ask questions from Google. And this is a good opportunity and we can quickly generate answers with ChatGPT. So how do you do that? I'm going to take the relevant search terms related to blue eggs because that's my main keyword. And then we'll type them in there. Now with the FAQs, you've got the H2 and then the H3, so heading three, heading two, etc., And then you've got the paragraph answers underneath. Now, one thing I want to test here is actually seeing, right, if I create FAQ schema on the page, is that going to rank better? FAQ schema is just a piece of HTML code that signals to Google that you have an FAQ section. And then it's easier to be featured in the featured snippets on Google, like you can see here. We can check if it actually works later. So to add the FAQ schema, what I'm actually going to use is a plugin called SWP schema block. Now you can do it however you want. I'm just going to use it this way. And you can see that we can pop in the question and the answer here. So we'll pop in the question and the answer for each question. And you can just add more and more FAQs if you want inside here. I was going to use ChatGPT to actually generate the schema, but I couldn't get it working. So instead we're going to use it this way and then we'll just keep adding all the FAQs like so. If you actually look on Google and you see the optimal FAQs length, it's around 40 to 50 words. If any of them are too long, for example, like this one, you can just cut it down a little bit. There we go. And then we'll hit okay, like so. We'll click update and that's our new re-optimized article. So now I just need to go through each of the rest of the pages. And then in this tracker right here, you would add the changes, right? So you've added new H2s, more images, covered each bird in more detail, improved the introduction and added FAQ schema. 
And then what we can do is revisit this after we've re-indexed the page and Google has crawled it and see what position we're coming out at. And you would just rinse and repeat this process and keep iterating until you finally reach the target position that you want. And it could take a bit of tweaking and testing, but I'm going to do that for each of these pages. And that's basically it. That's how to improve your rankings using ChatGPT and re-rank your old content. Now you might say, does that actually work? And I would say, it's funny you say that because I'm doing a screencast on YouTube right now and I didn't think I'd be able to hear you. But basically, if we take this page that we've just re-optimized today and we scroll down, you can see that this page has previously done the same thing, right? So we had the content written in 2021 and it was getting a decent amount of traffic, but then it took a dip. So I re-optimized it and the content jumped massively in April 2022. And then as the content has become older, and less fresh, we've done the same thing. And then it's bounced back up and then taken a hit recently as well. So this game of re-optimizing old content is very high leverage, but it's something you constantly have to do, right? So I would highly recommend that you set up a system where every three months you look through your old content, you check which pages have taken a hit in terms of traffic, and then you just re-optimize them. And the beauty of ChatGPT and tools like Phrase.io is it's very easy to identify where you can improve, what you need to improve. And then between checking phrase and your competitors on Google, you can easily figure out, okay, here's how to re-optimize my old content to make it fresher, to make it better and help it improve its rankings. And that's basically what we're doing with this website to constantly improve it. Now, of course, we're publishing a lot of new AI content as well. That also helps, but it's always important to go back, check your old content, make sure it hasn't dropped because chances are, Every website has content that drops eventually. So thanks so much for watching. If you want access to all the prompts and all the systems that we've talked about today, you can get them in my free course. I'll leave a link in the comments. And if you want to discover how to improve your rankings, you want us to personally show you the best strategies to get more backlinks, to outrank your competitors, to improve your SEO traffic, then feel free to book that in. That's completely free. You can book it in right here. I'll leave a link in the comments. And thanks so much for watching.